Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are, and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's episode of the things you may have missed in Elden Ring, we're going to be covering the first area of the Altus Plateau. Before we get into it, you're going to need the two halves of the medallion to operate the Grand Lift Dectus. The first half you should already have from way back near the start of the game in Limgrave. You get this from the highest tower in Fort Height. And for the second half, I'll give you a very quick run through now. You just need to head to Fort Faroth in Kaled, located just here on the map. We'll be covering this fort in full when we cover this section of Kaelid, but for now I'll just speed through and show you exactly where the medallion is. Once you've grabbed both halves, I'll meet you back at the Grand Lift and we'll progress into the Altus Plateau. As we're heading towards the Grand Lift and coming into the Altus Plateau, at this point I'd just like to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy content like this, and please give this video a like and drop a comment if you enjoy the video. And now that we've made it to Altus Plateau, we'll head pretty much directly north of the lift Grab this Sight of Grace here, and continue on to the first tip. From the Sight of Grace we just unlocked, we're going to follow the marker all the way up the main road to the northeast here, and this will take us in the direction of the map for the area. When you get quite close to the map, you'll come across a golden seed here, and right next to it, as long as you've been progressing his quest line, is Corrin. As you're exhausting his dialogue, he mentions about the Noble Gold Mask, and as I've just marked on the map here, you'll find Gold Mask all the way to the north of this area, right on the end of a broken bridge and we'll actually be visiting him near the end of the video. So with that done, we'll move on to the next tip. Back at the Altus Plateau site of Grace, head all the way to the southeast, and you'll be able to swing around and hop down these mountains, and here you'll find another Everjail. Godfroy, ridiculous name aside, is a descendant of Godric the Grafted, and was actually the first Grafted. So Godric is an even bigger tool than we already knew he was, and actually just stole the idea from this dude. He's basically the real Godric. This boss fight works practically the same as Godric the Grafted, except he's a bit more aggressive, he's got way more damage and way more health. Also, he doesn't have a phase 2 where he gets a giant dragon head on his arm, but he really makes up for it due to the fact that he's just incredibly powerful. Also, due to the fact it's an Everjail, you can't use summons, you can't use your spirit ashes. So it's a bit of a challenging one, this. And when you do finally take him down, you'll get 26,000 runes and the Godfrey Icon. The Godfrey Icon is an incredibly awesome talisman that enhances your charged spells and skills. And now that you've felled Godfrey, we'll move on to the next area. Once again, back at the same site of Grace, we're going to head north and slightly to the west just where I've placed this marker. Before we move on, far to the north in this fog here is where the map for this portion of the area is. So we're only gonna very briefly dip our toes into the uncovered area of the map here for this video. We'll be covering most of this area in a later video once we've got the map. So keep heading north and eventually you'll come to the Lux Ruins. Deal with all the demi-humans around here. Then there's a Scarab that you can kill that'll give you the Shield Crash Ash of War. And if you come down into this little cave, you'll face the demi-human queen Gillica boss fight. Defeat her, you'll get a few runes, and through the next door you can get the Ritual Sword Talisman. Now head back up and keep heading northeast. After you hop off the edge of the cliff here, you'll get yourself a golden seed. And we're going to very briefly dip our toes into a little bit more of the unexplored area of the map. But most of this, as I say, we'll save for the next video. So hop up these few cliffs and you'll see that the beast eye quivers. And you can go and light that gatekeeper statue as well. Now in these ruins, you'll be faced with a tibia marina, who's significantly more powerful than the other ones we've faced so far. Be very, very careful of the giant, giant skeletons he summons. They're absolutely lethal. But apart from that, this fight is very similar to the other two that we fought so far in this series. And once he's dead, you'll get a load of runes, death root, and the tibia's summons. That's all we're going to be doing here in Wyndham Ruins for now. We'll come back and explore the rest of these ruins along with the rest of this area in a later video. Right by the golden seed that we just picked up, you can grab yourself the Erd Tree Grazing Hill site of Grace just here. And now we're going to head southeast and start clearing out all of these camps with all the soldiers and knights in. I'll blitz through here and then just call out the few items of note worth grabbing whilst you're here. So in this chest you can grab yourself a sacrificial twig and once you've cleared out the main camp 
you'll get the Troll's Golden Sword from one caravan and the Great Shield Talisman from the other. There's a ton of camps around this area and a ton of enemies along with them. So even though there isn't much loot apart from them two weapons at the end there, you may as well clear out all the camps while we're here because they're very easy enemies to kill and they're going to give you loads of runes whilst doing so. Now finally, head back to the same site of Grace again head northeast and within this pool with all the trees in you'll see there's a scarab floating above it when you get near it it'll drop down and when you take it out you'll get the ash of war blood blade which is just awesome such an epic ash of war and we're done with this area so we'll head back to the altus plateau and on to the next one now that we're back here, pass the time until it's night time and we're going to go face a knight's cavalry. On the way, head over into this camp here though and we're going to deal with a bunch of the bastard, flappy, flyy beastmen twats. And once they're all dead, you can grab yourself a stone sword key. Now go and deal with the knight's cavalry. He's nothing compared to the one we already dealt with in Caelid, so you should be absolutely fine. And you'll be rewarded with the Ash of War Shared Order. And finally for this one, it takes me bloody ages to find this scarab. So you'll have to bear with me and I will be able to show you it in a minute. This is an invisible scarab, but unlike the other invisible scarabs, it doesn't leave the kind of like glittery footprints that they usually leave. You'll see when I finally spot it off in the distance here, there's just a tiny little dust aura around it. So just look very carefully around this area and you will find it eventually. Now that you know what you're looking for, as you've just seen me find it, that should help you out. And you'll get the Earthshaker Ash of War. That's it for this one. So we're going to finish up by grabbing another site of grace just to the northeast of us. And I'll meet you there. Head pretty much directly north from here. And you'll come to a camp with a few ogres in it. Once you've dealt with them, you can grab a perfume bottle. Now we'll head back on the main road where we found the map and Brother Corin, And we'll follow it round all the way to the end. Once you are at the end of this road, you'll find a finger reader crone, a site of grace, a traveling merchant, and a portal which we'll be visiting later on in the video. So rest up here and then we'll do a few things in this area. Okie dokie, as we're it, we may as well speak to the merchant. One of the worst merchants in the game, honestly. But he's got a few bits we may as well grab. Stock up on stone sword keys if you need. Grab yourself the Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook 2, which lets you craft lightning pots. And then he's got a few notes as well with a few hints and tips about the game for you. Grab all the bits and bobs that you want. And I'm just going to bring the map up for you now and talk you through what we will and won't be covering for the rest of this video. So anything north of where we are now, we'll be doing in later videos. Where the Minor Erd Tree is, this is a huge chasm, which probably is going to be a video in its own right. And then also the whole of the northern region above us as well will also be another video so we haven't actually got much left to cover and it's all going to be much further down south from where we are at the moment so now we're going to go back to the Altus Highway Junction and head all the way along that southeast path to the crater that you can just see in the map at the end there feel free to kill all the enemies but I just ran past them all and when you get to the giant crater at the end that you saw on the map, you'll be faced with the Falling Star Beast. Very cool enemy, I really like this guy. He reminds me of a way less difficult version of the Raging Bull from Sekiro. So if you got good at beating that bull, you shouldn't have any issues with this guy. Though I'd be lying if I said I didn't die to him at least a few times off camera. When you kill him dead, you'll get a Somber Smithing Stone 5, 5 Smithing Stone 6s, and an absolute ton of Gravity Stone fans and chunks. Awesome reward from this boss. And we're done here, so we'll move on to the next area. You now rejoin me stood just above this church you can see in front of me here. I did the run here off camera because I wanted to make sure this was actually accessible. Now that I know that it is, all you want to do is teleport yourself to the Altus Highway Junction and then run directly north and you'll find yourself where I am now. However, I've just remembered something huge that I should have shown you a few videos ago. So before we drop down there, we're actually going to travel back to the Rhea Lucaria Academy, specifically to the main academy gate, Site of Grace. From here, Head past the seal slightly to your north, and as long as you progressed Eurus questline in Limgrave, you should be able to interact with a sign here and be summoned to assist him. You'll teleport to his world and you'll be tasked with defeating the bloody finger Ravenmount Assassin. Once he's dead, you'll get your usual reward of a rune arc, and then back in your world, you'll instantly be rewarded with the Raptor of the Mist's Ash of War and you can now go and speak to Yura here for a Smithing Stone 5 reward, and he'll also tell you about his hunt for Eleonora, the deadliest of all bloody fingers. Now, teleport back to the highway junction and run to that church you saw me at just a minute ago. You can drop down, and you'll unfortunately see Yura on the ground dying, having just been beaten by Eleonora. 
When he dies, you can loot the Nagakiba from him, and you will very swiftly be invaded by Eleonora herself. If you let her go on the offensive, she is lethal. Her pole blade is awesome, and she has a few different dragon head incantations as well. You're not going to fuck up the quest line if you do die here. You can die and keep coming and trying her again and again. Good luck, and once you beat her, you'll get the Purifying Crystal tier, and you'll get Eleonora's pole blade. And the Purifying Crystal tier is a very unique crystal tier, in that it only has one purpose. It is used to negate an attack from a particular boss later on in the game. I'm going to leave it there and we'll revisit it when we find that boss. Now that she's dead, you've got the weapons, you've looted the sacred tier from this church, you can move on and we're going to go into the very last tip for this video. Back at the forest spanning Great Bridge site of grace, we're going to go through the portal that we came to earlier. And you'll see this brings us out at the other end of the broken bridge. And you remember who I said was at the end of this broken bridge? It's Gold Mask. And there's some epic dialogue right here. If you speak to him, he will say all of zero words to you. Exhaust his many, many lines of dialogue. And now you can go back to Brother Corin and let him know you've found Gold Mask and start progressing the quest line. I won't do that in this video because it is literally just going back and forth between the two until you get them to meet up. And and then you will have progressed the quest line far enough to meet up with Corin and Gold Mask in the Royal Capital, which you will have already seen from my Things You Missed in the Royal Capital video. So with that, we'll leave it there. I'm so excited to show you and explore more of the Altus Plateau. So we'll be revisiting this very soon, probably in the next video, as long as I've got nothing else planned in the meantime. And with that said, I'd just like to say, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.